Hey everyone, it's Bob Crossan, Editorial Director for Wastewater Digest. I am joined today by Victoria Bates. She is Regional Sales Manager for Veolia Water Technologies, as well as Ashley Waples, Product Manager of Ditch and PMT Technologies for Veolia Water Technologies. Thanks both of you for being here. We're going to be talking about on-site biological treatment, but thank you so much for being here. Thanks, yeah. What are some of the common methods that are currently used in treating wastewater? Yeah, so there are numerous methods, but in general, the basis of, bio, of um, wastewater treatment is biological treatment. Mm -hmm. Biological treatment uses uh, bacteria and other microorganisms to oxidize BOD, the biological oxygen demand, and then often provide nutrient removal like nitrogen removal or phosphorus removal. Um, this is achieved under forms of aerobic, anoxic, and or anaerobic conditions, depending on the effluent, effluent we're trying to achieve um, and any kind of regulations we're trying to meet. So from there, biological treatment has two main categories. They have, um, we have like suspended growth and attached growth, also known as fixed film. With suspended growth, um, it's commonly applied and is typical in activated sludge technologies. There's numerous configurations of activated sludge technology, um, and we won't get into all of that <laughs> in this video, but essentially with suspended growth, we have wastewater and free floating microorganisms that form biological flock that settles out and then can recycle some portion back for further treatment. With attached growth, um, use, we use uh, some sort of carrier or media to retain and grow the microorganisms. That's what we'll get into more um, for this particular talk. The medium can be discs, plastic carriers, or some other uh, material that promotes biofilm growth. Okay, cool. Now, I know that a lot of treatment systems tend to have <laughs> centralized locations, especially in more metropolitan areas, but what are some of the challenges that come with treating wastewater when no centralized treatment exists, essentially? Yeah, so I think it's good to first define centralized wastewater treatment. So when we talk about centralized wastewater treatment, we're talking about what most people would think about when we say wastewater treatment plant. So that's a facility that's typically managed by a public entity like a town or a county or some sort of municipality. So why would we choose to treat wastewater on site rather than sending it to a centralized facility? And there's a couple cases why we may do this. So first of all, we may not have a centralized plant. So maybe we're in an area with a low population density and it's just not economically viable to build a centralized plant. Or maybe we do have a centralized plant, um, but we're still choosing to treat on site rather than sending to this plant. And we may do that because perhaps that centralized plant is already at capacity and they can't take any more flows or loads. Or maybe we're manufacturing something and have something atypical in a domestic wastewater stream um, that that plant can't handle. It would call process upsets. So maybe we need to do some sort of pretreatment or reduce loadings prior to sending to the centralized plant. Um, or maybe we're really far away from it and it makes sense to discharge locally or uh, maybe it would require a pump station or infrastructure or something that's just also not economically viable. Um, so there's a couple of considerations and challenges that we have to think about um, with on-site treatment. Um, so economic considerations are probably going to be one of the main drivers. And this is because, you know, we're either a business, maybe we're an industry, maybe we're a resident. So treating wastewater is going to be an expense for us. We're probably not receiving any sort of public funding. So we have to consider both capital cost and operation and maintenance costs. So capital cost being how much does it cost us to buy the system originally and then operation and maintenance cost, how much do we have to pay to keep it up while we're using the system? So this is things like spare parts, energy consumption or any sort of recurring cost, you know, if we need a chemical or something like that. So other than economic concerns, we also have to think about footprint because a lot of times we're working within, um, within property lines or maybe an existing building. So we really need to do the treatment and ideally the smallest space as possible. 
And then really a, a final consideration is operations. So we probably don't have someone who is going to be dedicated to operating this system around the clock. So we really need a system that's able to run automatically, that's able to adjust to the incoming um, influent parameters. And it needs to be able to do this without someone constantly needing to make changes or constantly being able or constantly needing to monitor it. Yeah, those are all very important things to, to for communities out there to address. But uh, how does Veolia Water Technologies on-site biological treatment work? What technologies are you using to try and address those particular challenges? Yeah, so for our on-site biological treatment solution, we have a few advantages by going with a flow-through fixed film process. In general, these types of systems can achieve treatment in a smaller space and are operationally more simplistic because you don't have to worry about return activated sludge or sludge wasting. So Veolia's on-site biological treatments are EcoDisc and EcoSim technologies are um, best suited for domestic wastewater in flow ranges of about 5,000 to 200,000 gallons per day with some variability to that flow range. We are typically looking for carbon removal and or some nitrification. Um, the key applications for this system would be hotels, condos, ski resorts, some small residential or commercial sites, or maybe some health facilities, parks, et cetera. Um, from there, we have several sizes and configurations to meet the needs of that particular on-site solution. Uh, they're comprised of either bio disks with our eco disk technology or annex called its media in a drum um, in our eco sim technology, both of which would rotate along a single geared motor shaft. The biofilm grows on the surface of the bio disks or the media from there. And then the bio disks or the media are partially submerged in wastewater. So bacteria is able to get exposed to both the process water as well as coming out of the process water, it's exposed to air as the drum rotates out. So this allows for passive aeration um, through both immersion and immersion of the media, allowing us to eliminate the blower, which is a lot of uh, maintenance and energy for most plants. Um, with that, we're able to also have multiple bio disks in the process water where we have multiple compartments all on the same rotating shaft with a single motor. Uh, this allows us to expand both the treatment capacity or to improve treatment with multiple stages, similar to an MBBR technology. Um, in addition to the biological stage, we also have the options to pair these bio disks or the EcoSim with our drum filter, very similar to our Hydrotech drum filter, same technology used there, or lamella settlers. Um, those would be a separate uh, separation step, all within a single containerized unit that fits within a 40 foot shipping container. So it's super easy for shipping and then installation. Fantastic. Now, what are what are some of what are some of the benefits that a package system like this can bring to a community? You talked about a lot of the challenges uh, previous there, previously there, Victoria. Are what elements of this is actually solving those those challenges? Yeah, so there's many benefits to this type of system, um, the EcoDisc and EcoSim, like Ashley was just describing. Um, I talked about in my previous answer that economics were a main driver. So this product um, really provides an excellent quality to price ratio. Um, so the EcoDisc and EcoSim, they're both comprised of high quality polypropylene. So this helps keep material costs down, um, which keeps overall capital costs down. And then like Ashley mentioned, we have the single motor for shaft rotation. So we have very, very low energy consumption, something around like less than a kilowatt for a single unit. So we're taking advantage of that passive aeration instead of having to put bubbles into the water um, with aeration equipment like blowers, diffusers, piping. 
um, all of that good stuff. So that saves us about 40 to 60 percent on energy consumption compared to other um, technologies. We also have no spar no we also have no spare parts that routinely need replacement. We also save on construction costs because we have very minimum civil works um, because the system comes in a container. So um, you know it's it's not a lot of site prep and it makes for a very fast installation. And besides the economical considerations, we have no noise, no odors, no risk of clogging, and it's designed to be visually appealing. Um, and this is important because a lot of times when we're doing on-site treatment, it's going to be somewhere where we don't expect or where the public doesn't expect there to be a wastewater system. So, for example, let's say we have a resort. Um, you know, if someone's on vacation lounging in their lounge chair, they're probably not going to be too excited about seeing or smelling a wastewater system. Um, so we still need to achieve our treatment, but we want to make sure we're managing um, public perception as well and, you know, not getting complaints about the system. Um, and sticking with this resort um, example, it's also able, this EcoDisc and EcoSim both are able to adapt to seasonal load variations. So maybe we have somewhere um, with the peak season where we're going to have really high flows and loads. It's able to handle that. And then maybe um, at other times in the year, our flows and loads drop. So we're having a lot of variation in what's coming into our system. Um, both of these are able to easily adapt to those changes. Um, and it doesn't really require a whole lot of operational changes. The system can also be installed outdoors. So if we're somewhere where it gets really cold in the winter, um, that's not a problem. We're still able to achieve biological treatment even um, when we drop to these lower temperatures. So just to kind of summarize um, everything I just said, um, you're getting with EcoDisc, EcoSim, both of those, you're getting reliable, high quality effluent. Um, with minimum maintenance, easy operation, easy installation, and all of this is at an affordable price point. Great. Well, thank you guys both for walking through this with us and telling us a little bit more about the technologies that you have available to solve a lot of these very common problems for, for communities that are out there. And for everyone who's watching, check out the related content down below. You can learn some more about Veolia Water Technologies and the technologies they have available.